Hi, I'm Mike Charon. Today we're harvesting some fiddlehead ferns. Um, they're just starting to pop. So I'm out here. I'm not going to get into my specific location, but I'm here in North Conway. And um, let me show you what's around here. So we can see we're in a overflow area for the river. That'd be the Saco River, I can tell you that much. And you can see these are the ostrich ferns here. They're all dead from last year's crop but you can see they're starting to starting to come up right here is one example and you can see the paper bags on them so i'm harvesting these with a knife i'm just cutting right here and it's a good idea to leave one or two if you can just to make sure they all come up but it's a pretty significant area here uh, this is but one area i have probably I know of about probably about four acres of ostrich ferns so I'm gonna get a lot so we can see what I've gotten so far is in this bucket and I've you can still see there's a lot of debris in here I'm gonna need to take these home clean them up and I'm gonna blanch them to get the tannins out the water will be brown i'll dump them out dry these a bit and then i can bag them in polyethylene bags and freeze them and um, if they're prepared right they're delicious so let me go ahead and harvest them and show you All right, so here's some that are coming up right now. I'm gonna leave these two on top. They're taller. I'm gonna leave those out of the picture. I'm gonna harvest these three heads down here. So I'm just gonna slice and then clean up, clean up the bag as best I can. Grab another one, slice, clean up the bag. And another one. So these I'll leave be. They're getting unfurled. I could harvest them, it'd be fine. And there's some new ones down here that are gonna be coming up. Uh, for the knife, I'm just using a fillet knife. It seems to work pretty good for this. If I wanna get really aggressive in harvesting them, I can find little spots like this. And if I lift this up, there's gonna be some fiddlehead ferns under there. The problem with these, they're very young, they're very tender, they're awesome, but they're a little bit harder to clean up because the bags are moist. So once they've been exposed to the air a little bit, they'll dry off and then they tend to just flake right off. So, um, the, being that I've uncovered these and they do look awesome, I think they will harvest them. Also in this area, also good to eat, are these. These are trout lilies, the young leaves. Uh, the, the name after the pattern on the leaves looks kind of trout-like. But these are actually good to eat. And we can eat these um, We can eat these as they are right now. They don't have to be cooked. You don't want to eat a lot of them because if you do, they can make you puke. And don't want that. concept here with the trout little leaves. They're actually quite tasty. Um, like I said, you just don't want to eat a lot of them. They can make you sick. You can tell I'm in North Conway, you can hear the train. It makes quite the racket. <laughs> Hi, welcome to my kitchen. Next step is I'm just uh, soaking these in some fresh cold water and Trying to get some of the uh, sand and some of those uh, paper bags, as they're called, or bags, as they're called. Trying to get some of those cleaned off of here initially.
brought some water to boil. I've cleaned these as good as I can. Put them in there. We'll brighten up a bit. I'm gonna have to mix them because there's quite a few and I'm doing this in a single batch. I'm gonna grab a spoon. Water is going to turn pretty brown and probably bring this water back up to a boil. And blanch them for about I don't know, three, three minutes or so. And then I'm going to put them into an ice bath to cool them down. didn't see it, but I took these, they were hot, um, from the cooking, from the blanching, and I submerged them in a sink full of cold water and rinsed them a couple times, put them in here to uh, drain most of the liquid out, and I'm actually going to spread them out on a paper towel, or uh, cloth towel here, just try to get most of the moisture off before I freeze them before I bag them and freeze them up. There. Quite a bit here. It's gonna be worth worth the effort, I think. them in. You can see how this colored it is. I believe it's from the tannins. You really need to do this with the fiddleheads before you eat them, before you even cook them. So I'm now going to bag them up. I'm going to do two cups of Fiddleheads per bag. So there's two cups right there. These are polyethylene bags. It's going to help protect the uh, fiddleheads from freezer burn. going to do long-term storage I might double bag them but these are high quality bags so they should be fine for the summer there we go bag up the last one two one cup servings good. So it looks like I got seven packages, each containing two one cup servings. So not bad, not bad at all. Next step's going to be cooking. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil in the pan. Bring the pan up to the heat. <clears throat> I uh, did get this half cup or so is extra. And I'll cook those up now. So it can be harvested to table in a single day. Heat this up. I've added a little bit of butter to the pan. Just gonna 
bring us up the temperature. Ooh, messed up my feet. Nice clean stove. Don't want this quite smoking yet, but close. Hearing that, just get some. Just put the small non-stick in. Whoops. Alright, so here's a little bit of salt. A little bit of pink Himalayan salt and a little bit of fresh ground pepper. I think that's all we need for seasonings. Couple that with the oil and the butter. I get a nice guy some color. I've been cooking these for Sauteing for a couple of minutes now. Maybe about three minutes. Starting to get some color on them. Not quite ready yet. did turn the heat down, by the way. Uh, medium high right now. I just tasted one. Almost ready. Need a little bit more salt, so I'm gonna put it in another pinch. That should do it. Turn off the heat. Grab a clean plate. And here we are. for yourself. Thanks for watching.